busy morning in the factory yard. A big, long, flat lorry was parked right in the middle and people rushed here and there with bits of cardboard, pots of paint, big flags, little flags, sticky tape and glue. It was the day of the town carnival. The ragged dolls watched from behind the tool shed as the lorry began to look more and more like a fairy tale castle. It's amazing what a bit of paint and glue can do, observed Lucy. Absolutely, agreed Princess. It's beginning to look fabulous. Everyone agreed, except Sadsack. It's all very well, he said, but no one is going to let us ride on it. We're only rejects. Zit alors, muttered Claude. Voilà, the king of the miserable. Oh, come on, Sadsack, said Dotty. This is supposed to be a happy day. You should jolly well cheer up. After all, said Back to Front, it was your idea. It all began two weeks ago with a telephone call to Mr Grimes from the town mayor. Hello, Grimes Soft Toys. Grimes speaking. Mr Grimes was very honoured to be speaking to the mayor. Why, hello, Mr Mayor. This is indeed a pleasant surprise. Uh, what can I do for you? Mr. Grimes listened wide-eyed as the mayor invited him to design a float and take part in the town carnival. Oh, yes, I can see it would be good publicity. Uh, uh, consider it done, Mr. Mayor. You can rely on all of us here at the factory to put on a gala display. Uh, uh, yeah, goodbye. But when he put the phone down, he couldn't think of what to do. He decided to go and see Flory, the absent-minded canteen lady. Flory had just finished washing up the lunch things and Sadsack was hiding behind some saucepans on the shelf. He was feeling a little peckish and had his eye on a big piece of treacle tart that no one had wanted. Flory dried her hands. Right, that's it then. For another day at least. Time I was off shopping. Good, thought Sadsack. He could almost taste the treacle tart. Just then, Mr Grimes came in. Ah, Flory, can you spare me a minute or two? Sadsack's heart sank as he listened to Mr. Grimes explaining all about the carnival. Hurry up and go, he thought. Well, anyway, we've got two weeks to think about it, concluded Mr. Grimes. I just thought I'd let everybody know, and then we can all choose the best idea. Right you are, Mr. Grimes, said Flory. I'll have a jolly good think then. At last they were gone, and Sadsack helped himself to the treacle tart. In no time at all, he was on his way across the big field to the treehouse, where he planned to eat the delicious gooey tart all by himself. I wonder where the others are, he suddenly thought. Satsak stopped. He knew he ought to share the treacle tart, or at least offer to, but he'd waited so long for it, and it looked so tempting. I bet they're up in the treehouse, he muttered. He quickly decided that if he didn't look for the others, then he wouldn't be able to find them. It was the perfect excuse. He sat down in the middle of the big field and lifted up the treacle tart. But before he could take a bite, a wasp appeared, and then another. Mmm, said the first. Treacle tart. Yummy, said the other. My favourite. Buzz off, said Sadzak crossly. You're not going to eat that all by yourself, are you? demanded a third wasp. Uh, no, fibbed Sadsack, starting to flap. Go away. I've got to share this with my friends. The wasps got annoyed and began talking all at once. Don't flap at us. Sting him. Call the others. Treacle tart, everybody. Sadsack groaned as more and more wasps arrived. He got up and ran as fast as he could. Quick, after him. Don't let him get away. 
The raggy dolls were up in the treehouse doing some drawing and colouring. It was all very peaceful until they heard Sad Sack come puffing up the secret stairway. <gasps> Help! Save me! He gasped. Whatever's the matter? said Lucy in alarm. Wasps! wailed Sad Sack. They're after my treacle tart. Calm down! said Dotty. There are no wasps, and as far as I can see, no treacle tart. Oh no! I must have dropped it. Sad Sack was so upset about losing his treacle tart that he didn't mention anything about the carnival until bedtime. How exciting, said Princess. Perhaps we should think of some ideas too. Everyone agreed. I wish you'd told us before, said Lucy. We could have drawn our plans in the treehouse this afternoon. No problem, said Back to Front. We've got two weeks. Let's see what the factory people think of. Then maybe we'll be able to help. <gasps> Good thinking, said Dotty with a yawn. I'm sleepy. Good night, everyone. The raggy dolls wished each other good night and were soon fast asleep. A whole week went by and no one at the factory could think of an idea that everybody liked. Mr Grimes was getting concerned. The raggy dolls listened outside the canteen window as he told Florrie that something had to be decided soon. I've organised a lorry, but that's all. There's only one week to go now. Have you thought of anything yet, Florrie? To be honest, Mr Grimes, it slipped my mind. I'm ever so sorry. The Raggy Dolls decided then and there to come up with some ideas of their own. All day long, they drew ideas of how the lorry could be decorated. Hi-Fi drew a spaceship. Claude drew the Eiffel Tower. Dotty drew a South Sea Island. But everyone agreed that Sad Sack was the best of all. He'd drawn a fairy tale castle with princess dolls looking out of the windows and teddy bear soldiers guarding the ramparts. Who are they guarding against? said Lucy. Wasps, said Sad Sack, quite seriously. Dotty smiled. Come on, it's late. We'd better be getting back. We'll think of a way of showing it to Mr. Grimes in the morning. But that night, the raggy dolls had a visitor. It was Mr. Grimes. He was walking around the factory, hoping for inspiration. He looked in the reject bin and saw the raggy dolls. Hmm, more rejects, he grumbled. I'll throw them out myself. He gathered up the raggy dolls and was just about to leave when he noticed a piece of paper. It was Sad Sack's drawing. Mr. Grimes picked it up and dropped the poor raggy dolls back in the bin. He studied the drawing. This is it. He gasped. I wonder who thought of it. What's a good idea like this doing in the reject bin? And so it was. The day of the carnival arrived and the lorry was ready. It looked just like Sad Sack's drawing. We m m m may be re rejects, stammered Hi-Fi. But, but, but we d d do have good ideas. Quite right, agreed Dotty. Well done, Sad Sack. Just think of the pleasure all the children would get from seeing your idea. But Sad Sack still looked glum. I'd rather see it for myself and be part of the parade, he said. Wouldn't you rather be in a nice empty canteen? smiled Lucy. <laughs> With no wasps, chuckled back to front. What do you mean? demanded Sad Sack. Claude grinned. We have met you under the treacle tart, mon ami. Are you not hungry? Sad Sack was overjoyed. Oh, yes, now you mention it, but I do hope you will all share it with me. Raggy dolls, raggy dolls, dolls like you and me. Raggy dolls, raggy dolls, made imperfectly. So if you're not at ease with your nobbly knees and your fingers are all thumbs, stand on your two left feet. And join our raggy doll chums Cause raggy dolls, raggy dolls Are happy just to be Raggy dolls, 